Hello everybody, good evening. My name is Emily Cunningham and I'm a marine conservation practitioner and I live and work in England. So for my story, I'd like to take you with me to a special time in my childhood. It's July 1998 and I'm spending the summer holidays, that time we get off from school, on the Isle of Anglesey, which is an island off the north coast of Wales on the west coast of the UK. Now I go there every summer and I'm eight years old and I'm absolutely desperate to be a marine biologist. And in order to kind of placate me, my dad takes me and my sister down to the local beach every evening. Now this is a special place, it's wild, it's rugged, and there I'm allowed to do everything that I'm not allowed to do in my normal life. So whether that's exploring the rock pools, clambering over rocks, but best of all, I'm allowed to stay up past my bedtime. Now, it's a night like any other. The sky is pink and orange, and I'm clambering around, and I think, I'm gonna watch the sunset. Some rocks to my right, and I'm gonna climb up high. So I'm climbing, the rocks are rough with barnacles, and I climb higher than I normally would go. As I stick my head above the top of the rocks, the wind off the sea catches my face, and it's cool, it's fresh, and it's laced with that salty tang. You know, the one that reminds you of summer holidays and days by the seaside. And there's nothing beyond except the Irish Sea and the sun sinking towards the horizon. So I'm watching the sunset, and then, out the corner of my eye, something black breaks the water. I'm like, Dad, Dad! And I look down, and it's a long way down when you're eight years old and you're up there. Dad, I've seen a dolphin. Don't be stupid, Emily, there's no dolphins here. I'm pretty sure I've seen one. And I keep looking, and I stare. I stare until my eyes go funny. And of course it doesn't pop back up. And of course everybody makes fun of me on the way home. So fast forward 10 years, it's 2008, and I'm in the first year of my undergraduate course in marine biology. I've gone to university in that same bit of the world, in North Wales, and I've signed up for a harbour porpoise survey. So we go out on the bus and we travel to the field site and we get there and we're at my favourite place. We're back and it looks exactly the same, exactly as I remember it. And then we walk out to the, to the edge, to the headland, and it's September and I've got a hat on and a coat on. And we sit down at the edge of the headland to watch for porpoises. Now, for those of you who don't know, a harbour porpoise is a small cetacean related to a dolphin. It's about the same size as me. And Wales is really special for them. So really close to, for, to the shore, straight away, there's about 14 porpoises feeding, swimming around. I'm so excited. I've never seen one before in my life. And then they all disappear. And I'm in the first month of my undergraduate degree. Maybe this is just what porpoises do. I don't know. I don't want to look stupid to those real scientists. So. I'm watching, the sea's gone still, very quiet. And then, around the headland, come bottlenose dolphins, 12 of them, big and boisterous, totally the opposite of harbour porpoises. And I'm overcome, overwhelmed. There's dolphins here, this place that I've spent hundreds of hours in my life. What do I do? And I think, I'm gonna call my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I told you so has never felt so sweet. So all of those times I went to that place, that special place, I didn't know what was there. I didn't even know that I should be looking. And I'm not alone in that. So some re research in England has found that 44% of English adults think that the seas on their doorstep are barren. Barren. We have 30 species of cetacean, over 40 species of shark. We have seagrass meadows, deep sea canyons, rocky reefs, all full of life and colour. And people don't even know it's there. So that set me on my mission. I'm now on a mission to get people excited about the life in UK seas. <laughs> Barren. <laughs> so I now develop kind of large projects that are all designed to do exactly that. And it's not just about getting people excited about what's in the sea. It's because that disconnect, it has a kind of darker side. So where I work in the northeast of England, the communities there, there is a real disconnection with the sea, with the marine environment. And that causes a lot of issues. So it's whether that issue is people thinking it's okay to let their dogs free to kill our seabirds for sport, whether it's people thinking it's okay to ride their motorbikes through our protected habitats, or whether people think it's funny to burn down our bird watching hides. <laughs> so these projects, they're not just about getting people excited about the sea, though of course there is a lot to be excited about. It's about celebrating what's hidden beneath those steely grey waves. 
It's about inspiring some pride, and it's about engendering stewardship. So together, we can build a brighter future for that amazing wildlife that's found in UK seas. Thank you.